Hello. In our Gospel reading, we hear that question asked of Jesus. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? In other words, there are all these commandments. And, you know, it's easy for us to pick and choose. We like a little bit of pick and mix. So we want to choose the ones that we think is our thing. But this question asks of Jesus, which of the commandments do you think is the greatest? And if it is the greatest, then what are we going to do about it? I love the fact that Jesus chooses a commandment, a summary as it were, and then says that everything else hangs on it. So there is no escape. We can't get away from it all. And this is it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And secondly, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So juxtaposed there is God in the middle. When I was at Sunday school, this wonderful song that I still remember, J-O-Y, J-O-Y, surely this must mean Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. So whatever way we look at it, Jesus is first. God is first. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love him with everything, in other words. So nothing mediocre here about our attention, our focus on God when it comes to worship. Love the Lord your God. This is the commandment that Jesus wants us to be focused on. So the reality is, as we go about our daily journey with Christ in the community, the first commandment that we should be living so that others can see and catch a glimpse is our love and our passion for God expressed in the way we live with each other. The second, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Doesn't matter who your neighbor is. You don't always get to choose who your neighbor is going to be, but they are your neighbor and you should love your neighbor in the same way that you love yourself. And then in the Old Testament book of Leviticus, Moses speaks to the congregation of Israel and says to them, you must be holy. You must be holy. But what is this holiness that is required of us? Because what we begin to see as we read further in that Leviticus chapter 19 passage is that the kind of holiness again begins with our love for God and our love for our neighbor. And so you shall be holy for I am holy. The Lord your God, I am holy. And so we need to exhibit and practice and model God's holiness if we are his children. And so what I found interesting when you read that Leviticus passage is that the kind of holiness is not a holiness that tells us that we need to pray 10 times or, or anything uh, like that. The kind of holiness is actually related to how we live with one another. I wonder, when was the last time that you and I gave much thought to the reality that being with one another is holy living. That's what God is looking for. 
He's not counting and ticking off how many times we have been to worship, how many times we have uh, had the, the, the sacrament. He's not ticking off how many times we've been to Bible study. He is ticking off how we live with one another. And this is what I find interesting in the passage. It says actually that you are to revere your mother and father. Now we know that not all mothers and fathers have lived in a way that makes, that endears their children to them. But we need to find a way, find a way of loving our parents. I happen to have a special love for all those who are my parents' generation. Because of what they faced, because of what they endured, their resilience, and actually, mostly, their love for God, in spite of the hardships that they went through in life. So they had a practice in the Old Testament where sometimes what they would do they would say that what they have is actually for God, so they would ignore their parents. This is being challenged. We need to care for the next generation. When I first came to this country, actually, I was shocked to discover that we had establishments for old people. I didn't know that. I never saw that in Jamaica growing up. Because in Jamaica growing up, the elderly grew up with us. So you would have your 90-something year old, you'd have the next generation, and the little tiny great-grandchildren all running around, all in the same community, together, living with each other. So that was a huge learning curve for me. And the kind of learning curve that enabled me when my father was ill in Jamaica and my children were very young, saying to my husband, you know, I'm going home to assist with my father, but if I can't find anyone to look after him, I may have to stay behind to look after him. Not because he was the greatest dad, because he probably wasn't. But then again, what models did he have about fatherhood? So the reality is, our parents, the elderly, the, the, the generation before us, we are to care and for them and love them. And then something else that I found in that passage, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges. I went to a church last week, Sunday, and uh, they had uh, apple trees, not on the church land, but next door, and there were apples by the edges, and I was so tempted. Ooh, those apples, they're going to waste. But this sense, don't gather everything in. Allow the alien, allow the, the refugees, allow the stranger, allow the orphan who has nothing to be able to come and get some food. So this sense, you shall not strip your vineyard bare, gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. This God of ours, this God of ours who is holy, his holiness is set around how we reach out and embrace, embrace those who have nothing. Be holy as I am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. In other words, be just in your dealings with everyone. You shall not go around slandering others. You shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. Please do read the passage. God's holiness is focused on how we live with one another. And so that commandment of Jesus, the greatest commandment, is focused on how we love our neighbor. And you see, I believe it is in 1 John where it says, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen and yet you do not love your brothers and sisters 
whom you can see. There's another passage in, 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 in the Leviticus uh, chapter 19, another set of words. When an alien resides with you in your land, do not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as you love yourself. Why? Because you were once alien in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. We can, uh, in the words, in, instead of alien, we can put another word there. Refugees, asylum seekers, those who are homeless, those who, you know, those who are seeking to come to our shore. When they are here, don't treat them. Don't treat them as if they are some alien from another planet. Why? Because they ought to be treated as God has treated us. So that's the challenge, my brothers and sisters, this Sunday. As we focus on those words, the greatest of the commandment, love the Lord your God with your whole being and love your neighbor as yourself. And your neighbor also includes the asylum seekers, the refugees, those who are fleeing terror, the people who have no money, who have nothing, the orphans, the widows, those who are most vulnerable. The greatest commandment calls on us to live in a way that shows the world around us that our changed lives is actually impacting on others and changing others' lives. So when someone asks you, what difference has it made to know Jesus? You and I, with great confidence, will be able to say, because I know Jesus, then I've been able to respond to my neighbor with compassion and with love. I've been able to respond to those who are homeless. I've been able to respond to those who are seeking refuge. That is the challenge, my brothers and sisters. So as we go out and we hear those words, what is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment is love. May God bless you as you seek to live that commandment day by day. Amen.